Hello everyone. So today I am going to explain Broad's fixed point theorem in two dimension. So before to start the proof of Broad's fixed point theorem in two dimension, first I will define some terms. So first is the closure. Let xt be a topological space and g be any subset of x. Then the closure of G, which is denoted by G closure, G bar, it is an intersection of all the closed sets which fully contain G. Or you can say the closure of G is nothing but the G union with all of its accumulation points. Now the next is retraction. Let S be any subset of R square and B be any subset of S. So if we define a mapping R going from S to B, then this mapping is said to be retraction if this mapping is continuous and RB is equal to B for all B belonging to the B. Right? So basically every image of this set S is going to the set B. Right, is a member of the set B. And since B is a subset of S, if image remains the same for all the members of B, then and the mapping is continuous, then this mapping is said to be retraction. For example, if we consider S to be disk and B to be the boundary of that disk, then we get a continuous mapping which is having the same value of the image the points at the boundary so the mapping going from the disk to the boundary which is continuous also is a retraction now the next is no retraction theorem Basically, the Broad's fixed point theorem in two dimension, it depends on this theorem, no retraction theorem. So, to prove the Broad's fixed point theorem in 2D, we first prove that no retraction theorem. Now, what this theorem says, this says there does not exist any retraction from a closed unit disk to its boundary. Right? So, there doesn't exist any retraction from from a closed unit disk to its boundary now to prove this we prove it by contradiction let's suppose r be a mapping going from disk to boundary and this is retraction right now we consider any two points on the boundary let these points are a and b now from the boundary of the unit disk if we remove the point a and b then we get two arcs right so after removing these two points from the boundary c we create two disjoint open arcs right which compose means their union is c deleted a and b Now further let R inverse of A is a set A and R inverse of B is the set B. Now since R is retraction, so this A, this is a point at boundary, so its image will be A, right? So it means this point belongs to capital A. Similarly, since R is retraction, therefore the point at boundary having the image, same image, right? So therefore this B, it should belongs to capital B. So it means A and B, they have a common point. Moreover, only these points are the common with the boundary C. So, the set A and B, they intersect C. Right? 
Further, R is continuous and singleton sets A and B both are closed. So, inverse image of this closed set is again closed because R is continuous. So, the capital set A and B they both are closed. Okay. And furthermore, A and B can be the only points where capital A and capital B intersect C. Because they are the only elements which lie in C and which are also the members of A and B. Right? So, they are the only points where A and B intersects. Okay? Further, the closure of this, clearly it will be C. The closure of C deleted A, B is nothing but C because these are the boundary points and they must belong in closure. The next we can find a subset of disk deleted A union B. So if we remove A union B from the D, then we can find a subset whose closure will contain C. So now just see, this is our complete unit disk and this is the boundary. Let's suppose the, here this A and B, these are any two points on the boundary. So if we remove these points from this boundary, we get two arcs, two open arcs, right? Whose union is a subset of this boundary. Right, that compose this C. And further this capital A and capital B. They are the inverse images of this point A as well as B. So this capital A and capital B. They intersect only at one point on the boundary. Right. So if from this disk we remove this A set and this B set. So, we are left with this, this part. From this part, we can find a set P, right? We can find a set P, which is open, which is path connected and whose closure contain C. So, we can choose this path, uh, this subset P, right? So, we can find a subset P of D oblique A union B whose closure will contain C. Call this set as P and this set is open as well as path connected. So, we get a path connected subset of this set whose closure contain C. Now, we consider a closed arc of C which contains A. Right? So we consider a closed arc which contains point A and call this as CA. So this CA has some endpoints. Let it be XA and YA. YA. Right? Both these endpoints lie in P closure because P closure will contain C. So clearly it contains XA and YA. So thus there exists a path which connects them. Furthermore, since we have defined P as a subset of D oblique A union B. So this path cannot intersect A or B. Okay. However, unioning this path with this results in another connected set. So if we take a union of the path this we get a new connected set. This implies that the retraction image of that union of path and this is nothing but this So we get a retraction image 
of the union of the path and this set is this because this path doesn't contain a and b so a b are not included so this a and b also not included so we get a new path whose image is this one but the image of a connected set under a continuous function cannot be disconnected so we get a contradiction so therefore our supposition is wrong hence there does not exist any retraction from the unit disk to its boundary so now just see the proof of brars fixed point theorem on the disk which is a subset of r square so given that the function f going from d to d which is continuous so there exists some c belonging to d such that f has a fixed point in this domain d now just see the proof let d be the unit disk in r square d is any unit disk in r square and f is a continuous mapping suppose it is not having any fixed point so we will prove it by contradiction we assume that f is continuous going from unit disk to unit disk but it is not having any fixed point now we consider another function r which is defined on the disk but now every point of this disk is going to the boundary of d so basically we extend this function such that uh, the point every point of the d it goes to the boundary of d right and also it passes through fx so by applying transformation basically we get another function r which send every point of d to the boundary of d and it also passes through fx so basically it is in the terms of fx and since fx is continuous so r is also continuous right so what we get basically we get the points lying on the boundary they have the same image because here r is any continuous mapping going from d to d and it send every point of d to the boundary so the point lies on the boundary basically their images are same so we get rx is equal to x for any x belonging to uh, lying on the boundary so this implies that r is retraction because it is continuous and every point of this is going to the image uh, to the boundary but by no retraction theorem there exists no such retraction so this contradicts right so this contradicts our supposition so therefore our supposition is wrong that means there exist a fixed point so that means whenever we have a mapping which is continuous on the disk to disk it always have a fixed point now further any set which is homomorphic to d any subset in r square which is homomorphic to t d let also satisfy the same so with this brars fixed point theorem in 2d is completed